You guys want to hear a story? You know, I've been um, held up by the Secret Service before. Some of you guys know this story. Some of you guys know it. I was visiting my friends in Baltimore a while ago, like a decade ago. We decided to visit DC. We took the train up and uh, I was, I was like 20. I was walking around with my friend at the Capitol. Yeah, at the Capitol. You know, it's the first time I'd been in DC. Uh, as somebody who up until that point had only been in Los Angeles, it's pretty crazy because the architecture, city layout, what have you, of DC is incomparable to LA. Totally different world. Also, near the Capitol in DC, you can tell the entire like section of the city is built like a fortress. Like there are tank traps and barricades. You can tell. Everything in Los Angeles is built out of like stucco and wood, you know? Like... Earthquakes are all they have to worry about over there. But you can tell in DC every once in a while you walk by something and you're like, oh, that's like the bunker the guys pour out of if anything bad happens. It's the capital, you know? So I was walking around with my friend and I was talking about this and I was like, oh God, like look at that over there. That's like 100% like a tank barricade, right? That concrete wall is like six feet thick, you know? Like what, like there's no reason for it to be like that except for like literal fortifications and after a while my friends and i walking around we realize we're being followed by the most just the most laughably stereotypically federal agent looking mother in the world he he's undercover he's wearing a suit with a tie clip and shades he's six foot six this big bald guy with like a lantern jaw and I'm, I, I, I turn to my friend and I'm like, is that secret? Like, that's not real. Right? That's just like a guy walking around or maybe that is secret service, but he's just walking around. Like he's not following us. You know, we're walking down big, highly populated sidewalks here. Like there's no reason to believe he's following us. We turn a corner, two cars pull up. We get detained. Apparently loudly talking about anything cool in DC. It's illegal to talk about the cool stuff at DC. You can't be like, oh, over there, that looks like a, like a, like a, you know, fortification, because they'll think you're like a Xi Jinping's greatest soldier sent over here to do reconnaissance. They held us up for an hour. Each of us got a, our own detective secret service agent guy. My guy was this, like, like, steely-eyed, I did war crimes in Baghdad m looking mother who had... I'm not, he, he had a submachine gun with a strap around his neck and, like, reflective vest that like construction workers wear over body armor. They gave you the bad cop. I got the bad cop. Okay, he was like, because I could hear the other guy, the one who was following us, the six foot six guy talking to my friends, they separated us. I got the bad cop. My two friends got the one good cop. Mm, I wonder why. I could hear the other guy. This guy's a laugh riot. He, he's like 40, maybe. He's older for the Secret Service. He's over there with my friends, you know. He's, he's, he's like telling jokes and stuff. I have like the serious, like, you know, NSA looking guy. And he's asking me all the questions they have to ask. He's asking like, you know, uh, what are your intentions visiting the city? Blah, blah, blah. Now keep in mind, of course, I'm familiar with my rights, you know, the whole, am I being detained shtick? But, um, for one, I was kind of entranced by the novelty of the situation. And for two, I understood logically that having committed literally no crime, this was probably just like bored secret service agents doing like, like they they have to fill their day somehow, I guess. And I didn't really want to be belligerent because I don't really know what the margins are on belligerency when it comes to cops versus Secret Service. You know, you can be kind of belligerent with a regular cop and get away with you. You have to like know the ins and outs, but you can be like varying levels of belligerent with the Secret Service. I don't know because I never talked to them before. So, you know, I'm playing along, I'm answering the questions, I'm just here with my friends. No, I don't have any weapons on me. But when he asked that question, I... Because I'm, I'm gunned up here because the other Secret Service agent is being jokey with my friends. So I'm thinking, okay, there's a rapport here, maybe. Maybe this guy's a tough nut to crack. I bet I can get him to smile. He's like, do you have any weapons? And I'm like, no, but took wrestling in high school. You could say my whole body's a weapon. I'm like, eh? Eh? not even the slightest movement on the sides of this guy's mouth, but he did put his hand in the butt of his, uh, his, his submachine gun stock. So, you know, weak sauce. Look, okay. It's so, it's so up. He didn't even smile. 
probably heard it a million times. I ah, pardon me for not being familiar with the intricacies of the social dynamics of interacting with the Secret Service agents detaining you. He didn't laugh. Okay, I would have chuckled. Thank you. Anyway, it didn't work out. But after about an hour of getting asked questions, uh, there was a third detective present the entire time who wasn't asking questions directly, but was leaning against one of the cars that had stopped at the corner and was occasionally like cracking jokes to his colleagues, but not talking to us. After a point, one of the agents was like, all right, we're done here. Would you like to come in with us and we can ask additional questions at, uh, at the station? And the third detective, the guy who hadn't been talking, said, don't say yes, you don't have to say yes, don't give us paperwork, you're fine, you can go, just say no. Um, so my friends and I were like, no, we don't wanna? And they were like, okay, and then they left us alone. So shout out to uh, the bureaucracy disliking, uh, you know, that was good. Yeah, he wanted some ice cream, you know? And I respect that. Should have said yes, just to be spiteful. That would have been the real, like, belligerency. I would have been like, yes, I do want to come in. I might have secrets and just waste that guy's day. That would have been fun. It probably wouldn't have been fun. You could have gotten a cool tour. That's true. You would have been killed. I could be wrong, but my guess is that you're probably safer with the Secret Service than you are with the cops because the Secret Service are extensively trained and have a lot of eyes on them, and they're also a much smaller organization. Whereas with the cops, there are sheriffs in the middle of bum nowheresville that can just disappear your ass with basically no oversight, varying levels of training. Um, also, people become cops to be racist. I don't think people become Secret Service agents to be to be racist. Maybe a lot of them do. I feel like with the Secret Service, there's probably like a wider range of motivations to lead to that point. Whereas with the cop, it's just because they're racist, you know. That would be my guess. Yeah, the Secret Service probably has a higher bar for competency. That would be my guess. Secret Service... Agents must score in the 90th percentile or higher on the Secret Service uh, rifle course to get admitted into SRU Basic. Huh. Interesting. 21 to 37 upon receipt of conditional offer, valid driver's license, uncorrected visual acuity no worse than 2100 binocular, possess corrected visual acuity of 2020 or better in each eye, pass a hearing exam, have no visible body markings, no tattoos. Exception, a single conservative and unobtrusive tattoo in the form of a ring, e.g. wedding band, is authorized on one finger. That's cute. You get to have one tattoo and it's the, the tattooed ring. What? Sometimes people in um, certain professions will get a tattooed ring because a ring is a, a liability in their work, either because they're like a soldier or a cop, or it could get degloved, like they're uh, they're like a lumberjack or something. It could get in the way, so they get it tattooed, so they always have it. Surgeons do it off. That makes sense. Yeah, surgeons. Be in excellent physical health, top secret clearance, of course. Sign a mobility agreement. Registered with the Selective Service. Bachelor's, at least one year of graduate level education. Does that mean one year of a master's? Uh, yeah, to apply to the GL07 or GL09 level, yeah. Is there anything like this for police? Uh, yeah, for police, uh, they give you the fit the square peg in the square hole test, and if you get all four shapes correct, they can't hire you. You have to fuck up at least one. I don't even think that's wrong. I don't even... That's in the ballpark of being correct, man. Have you ever talked to a cop? They're not playing with a full deck.